Hello and welcome to another gameplay review on the Vakayu Gameplay Channel. And in this one, we have the legendary Poppy Jungle. Still the second best champion with the hammer because of course Orna's first. But Sound of Winter is the rank 1 Korean jungler with 1000 plus LP, 63-65% win rate. And the dude has a champion ocean, well, just bigger than any planet covered in water. The dude can play anything with this style of jungling. Now, this game, instead of having a snowball, I figured let's take a, let's take a jungler such as Sound of Winter, who is extremely talented at snowballing games and winning games quickly, right? But what happens when you take a talented jungler that's great at snowballing and finishing, kick W, and you put him in a game where he doesn't exactly get his way? How does his jungling adapt? And how can we use Puppy to push down our will and still not die and still be the carry jungler on the team? Let's go and find out. Runes on your screen now. Obviously, that is a phase rush game because we have um, Alilia, Graves, Jin. So, you know, sticking to them and moving in and out is going to be pretty important. We will have innate tankiness, obviously, because we're Poppy. Um, and the Tenacity is going to help us against things like Leona and Silas. Solo start on the Raptors. That's what he likes. That's what he does. Uh, if he's playing a Jarvan, he won't do Raptors. He'll do red. Solo start. If he's starting bot side, he will get a leash, um, because it's obviously a better leash with two people. But he likes to throw in question marks, and he's got a very high adaptability in terms of um, uh, his roots, his clears. He will look typically for a five camp, but very often, if there's something that happens after three, he rotates, he deals with it. It's never a case of, hey, I'm stuck in a five camp, I can't adapt. The guy will be everywhere all the time. So, Lily starts on the bottom side, he knows that they see him. Starting leashless, on the Raptors doesn't really give you any value here because they know. So the scanner, which is big, lets him hit away that ward. And now they're like, well, did he go to the Krugs or was he going back down? If it's Predator Poppy, you could say, well, is he doing Krugs into a gang into Predator reset for boots? You know, they don't know exactly. So the scanner, they, even though they see him doing Raptors red, they don't know what he does afterwards. And that's the mind games. In this case, um, we see the pings. We know that Lilia is going to fall clear to no one's surprise. Here, you're going to do the typical red Raptors gromp. Look for action, because he did wrap his red grump. It's a little slow, but we're still in the same situation. So we observe, bottom lane, right. What's the level spike for this for this lane? Definitely um, level three. So we can actually bide our time and we can do the blue, right? Keep your eyes up, keep your eyes up for rotations. And because he's three, you could actually do it. And trust me, this guy rotates literally everything. This lane should be very cautious about a Lilia rotation, but he gets first blood and kills her anyway. We know she's gonna be up on that side. So this gank is absolutely free, and this is why I like this clear. It's why I like Poppy doing something rather than doing five camp and doing nothing. Level three, all right, here we go. Definitely want to get that Leona before she hits three, which is what I was getting at. I'm sorry if I misspoke and didn't be very clear about that. Um, if Leona gets three, that, that's a tougher lane to gank, so we definitely want to get there soon. Level spikes are important. You're like a thrash. Level three is really, really bad because of the landing, because of the flight, because of the hook. So if you can do a fast clear and try and gank it sooner, always good. Remove the shield, smite the crab. We know Lilia's gonna be on the top side, so we shout a mid lane here. Uh, Malzo has no mana, which means this is very, very tough. She could try and stun this, which she does. Silas Respect flashes it. Again, now be very, very cautious. You see the pings here, you see? You see the pings here. So what Poppy now does, because obviously, Cassiopeia, so graciously checking and seeing that our Krugs are gone. With Poppy, it's very important to note that if you solo start Raptors, actually with Poppy, with anyone, if you solo start Raptors, you see the hijinks here. The hijink, what does that even mean? You see the, the, the snap decision making going, okay, I want to do wolves, but if she took my Krugs, then my Raptors are most likely being stolen as well. Let me cut off the Lilia. Excellent read. Let me see the, the Malzahar being very low, still hasn't based yet. Let me try and do something about it. So this is good shadow support jungling. Flash or Flash, we'll take that. We're just looking to disengage here. We have bought pride because we created it. Grave shows up as well, pushes that with Q, disease champion. Excellent jungling. 99% of you, I guarantee, are doing the wolves, yeah? You're not thinking, well, Cassio shows that my Krugs are taken. Most likely she's going to try and eat these and gank mid lane because Malzahar has no mana, no, hasn't based yet. I need to shadow this to stop my Malzahar dying. Literally, he protected his mid laner at the expense of his own farm. And that's huge because now Lilia, Flash, got nothing for it. Exquisitely done. We lose this, so we go upside to clear it. We knew she took it. We saw the baby. We need to get that reset as soon as possible. It's the highest tick camp that we have on the map other than our Grump. Now, we are level 4, nowhere near level 5. We are Poppy, which means Lilia will outfarm us. Let's try and make some things happen. Um, vision tight to the wall, waiting for this bot lane to maybe commit and show something. We know Lilia is going to reset and sequence upside again. So instead of farming, we anticipate this counter gank. 
we move in, we do the E, we do have the W obviously active for movement speed as well as dash uh, removal, but it seems not much you can do in this situation. And that's why these games where you're behind, you know, <laughs> I love the cow. So we get something back. Um, in these games, if you were just AFK farming, yeah, and not rotating to the lane, and the Lilia ganks and kills the Malzahar, the Lilia ganks and kills the bottom lane, and you're farming your camps because you feel like you're behind, what's going to happen? They're just going to die, Lilia gets fed, and you don't get anything back. But because he played it this way, Lilia only gets, yeah, she gets a kill and an assist, but you're there for the play, and in another universe, in another, and in another game, said that way too quickly, the probably will be able to maybe stop the gank and stop the kills. Here, we know that they have prior. Um, we know that they're gonna try and fight this. I don't, this is like Bupo at Worlds. You don't have prior for this. Don't, don't die on that crab. It's not worth it anymore. I understand it's the first RNG crab. It's got higher value, but if you don't have prior, you can very easily just go up to your wolves. Uh, don't force it, don't die, but again, He's popping, he, know the, he knows the limitations of everything he plays. Uh, what do we have now? 925. So again, shadowing the mid lane, level 6 on the Malzaha. Uh, he stole the ult so they can just void Hopies each other. Just shadowing. Good job. Okay, look, just shadowing, 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 scanning. Okay, we see that. Um, that vision denial might have given things away, but again, beautifully done. Patience, patience, vision denial, sit in the bush. Silas gets caught out a little bit, I think he should have been a bit, you know, sushed about that, but it is what it is. Very well played. I love this. I love this so much. Rotate, shadow, good. Collapse, know it's going to happen, shadow, be present here. Again, I know it's going to happen, let's try something, it's an ult for an ult. It's so well played. It's at the expense of your farm. And even in a game where you're behind, and when this is happening, 2-0-1. He's way down on CS, ladies and gentlemen, way down on CS. But he's making impact. He's keeping the game within touching distance. And in fact, they're exactly equal gold. And that's all you can do. That's all you can do. And top lane's doing fine now. Um, in terms of the gold lead, blue's gonna go way up. You know, so it's not right now. Just keep your... Don't look at the KDAs and think, oh, this is easy. The path thing here is why it is the way it is. This could be way different. Finish your smite quest. Very nice. Thank you very much. Okay, we go for the red. Here, these Krugs are very valuable. Valuable. Level 5, because she took those early. Plant gets hit here. Silas MIA pings. Most likely has pressure. Um, the Lilia is going to just do her business. You know, she's absolutely going to do her business. Keep your eyes up for it. Obviously, try and counter gank and counter track and so on, but this is very interesting and very annoying. Silas mid lane is so strong. Also, it's worth noting that this guy, when he is filled mid play Silas, so he knows exactly what Silas mid is doing. We do have a bit of... <laughs> she will face check. She will face check. The top lane cheese, man. All right. We have Miasma, which is the most broken ability in the game, pretty much. Uh, we do that. Stunned against the tower with the ultimate. That was clean. Poppy, again, just like the jacks that we would have just covered. Innate tankiness and knowledge of, hey, how can we... How much can we tank? How much can we do? And during that escapade, you see how the immediate reaction is, look, this is warded. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Push this, please. Get some spell vamp. I'm going to go start this. I see that the vein gets killed by the Lilia in the meantime, which means this is absolutely free. And I don't have to worry about it. And this is the big thing. In games where you're ahead, in games where you're behind, if you can sneak a Herald, very good. If you can't match the jungle too much, um, and you have a lane that's feeding or maybe dying a bit too much for your liking, despite the attention you've paid it, and you can sneak away a Herald and some counter jungling and gank another lane to get them ahead, this, that's exactly what we want. So this was seen and pinged. We know she's there. A more classical jungler could just go and steal that blue. You see the blue team pinging it, thinking it's going to happen. But you know what he says? I'm Poppy. I'm not a farming jungler. Um... Let's do the classic and look at the, the graves. He pushes it and respects it. So top laners, this is good. See, this is nice. You see how they're gonna get a gold lead now, right? And you see how it's very important that the Lilia is a 401, but would be 501. Every little bit counts, but what can you do? Bot lane speed. Bot lane speed. Back to base. Uh, Ionia Boots of Jungling plus a Barmy Cinder. A little bit of Null Magic Mantle. A little bit of uh, Cloth Armor. Pretty nice. We know that the bottom side was most likely taken, so he should not need to check those camps. Um, we could here just look to take the Raptors and do this. Okay. Definitely something we can do, but if he, if he just wants to watch the Malzaha push the wave with the Void Hopies and then go for a deep invade here, get Vision Control, maybe to protect bottom lane a bit more, that works as well. Now we can four-man Goon Squad bottom lane. So this is just a good read by everyone. 
Let's see how it plays out. Da, 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 da. We can play the Indiana Jones music. Obviously, it's warded. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, we know that Lydia's, you know, sort of sequencing upside or sequencing top to bottom, so she should, in theory, not be here. Uh, that Malzahar ult was very fun, knowing that there was no flash, or knowing that there was a flash on the Jin. Again, something to keep track of when you're on high elo. You don't want to flash ult to Jin with ult. Especially where no one can change CC it immediately. It's a little ambitious. They're still able to get all the plates, a counter opposite play here, and we know the Lily ganked on the top side. We know Silas is pushing the mid lane. So, you get five plates, right? You've now lost two here, alright? Three here, and three here. So the deficit is eight to three, eight to five versus actually no, they got it's eight to eight to seven. So they're only down one plate because of that play. When you're behind, keeps you in the game, my friends. That's why I said that Herald is crucial. Lily is now two levels up. Do not freak out. You're a tank. You're a puppy. Again, a little bit of waffling here. We see that most likely our bot lane is, oh, sorry, our top lane camps are going to be stolen or counter jungled. We don't care. We don't care. We're puppy. You have a Nate tankiness. We have camp tank. Let the movement speed games begin. All right. Vayne's holding the tower here. Can she? Okay, this plate should go to nobody. And, um, okay, Hex Flash, off he goes. Now we have Pryor here, let's just take the dragon. Yeah, stranded stuff. Tank jungling, or, you know, Puppy, you can go to Vine Sunder and be very much a fighter, but you're playing a similar way. You can definitely spend your time farming, but use your kit. You know, you're so innately strong, which is why we always said, classically, um, Electrocute was super, super... Electric was super good on Poppy because you could use that huge early skirmishing power and damage that just no one ever expects uh, to get yourself fed, and then you just buy tank items and Divine Sunder and you're unkillable. Which is exactly what we want, no? It's exactly what we want. So, we'll take the Mountain Dragon. Beautiful. Now we're going to go and see if we can protect this. If you anticipate that Lily is most likely going to try and steal your stuff, which at this point I think we can, can we smite it away? Yes, we can. Bob the Builder. And now this guy's got cutting the wave here with this tower. So... If this is taken and they push in here and they try and cut in 2v1, don't fight it again just like the crab. Eat yourself out. Good safe pathing around the edge. Okay, when you're behind in the game, always around the edge. Don't face check these bushes. Pretend it's a chem tech direct map, yeah? You can't see, so don't face check it. Walk around a long way. Obviously, in this case, we have bushes to use, which is <laughs> very nice. Now, Leona's going to say, right, let's go for a ward. There's no objective up right now. There's no farm to take right now. There's nothing to do right now. So vision control is the order of the day. Holding waves, trying to figure out where they are. That's disrespect for pathing. So after all that, he still makes a pathing error. They will still be very, very patient. We know that Leona's there. However, the Leona is mispositioned, so immediately capitalize. I tell you, when you guys can start spotting mispositions as a team, that elo is fun to play because everyone goes, wait a second, Leona, you, you shouldn't be there. Okay. And if you're the tank, if you're the Malza, if you're the Poppy, pull the trigger on that place. If you're the Sejuani, pull the trigger on that. She's out of position. Kill her. The whole team is up here. So our path thing is bad and we lose Flash, but then Leona's is worse. Jin is pushing mid lane. Again, more plates going through. So they got five here. Um, they got four there. And I, I forgot. I think they got four bottom lane. Three bottom lane because one ding nothing. Lily now pushes mid lane. Level 11. We're going to take this tower as well. It's kind of falling apart a little bit. It's kind of... It's tough now. Yeah? 20, 29 to 24. That gold lead really crept up sneakily, sneakily. How will our hero handle the pressure? Okay, Cal goes Moo, Jin goes Whoosh, and bye bye because he's Usain Bolt. Again, we're kind of overchasing. Do we know the limits of our champion? We do have Melza on the back line here. Nice knock up. Um, we do get put to sleep. Doesn't matter. We can use that smite as we want, and the Melza uses the Void Herpes. So, nice from the Melza. They're very, very well played. Good use. We're post 14, right? Post 14 with unleashed prestige teleports. It's a much lower cooldown for context. Right? 160 now. 160. Silas is splitting bot lane. Ideally, we're kind of fed here like the Jax game where you can just go kill him. But if you're not in that situation, let's go for an adventure. Again, this is hyper aggressive, but he knows the limits of his champion. Leon is pushing too much. Jin is dead. Graves is dead. Why are you out of position? Let's pull the trigger on that. Stun against the wall if we can. Knock up for the stun. Mm. Mm. Don't know if we wanted to use the ult. Oh, sorry, we didn't actually use it. There we go. Now we use it. Full on disengage. My eyes. I'm fatigued. I apologize. But nice disengage. Behind games, I don't always like commentating on as much because 
This is tough, you know? You guys all want the magic pill, right? You want the ma how do I get back in this game? It's patience, controlling your jungle and patience. That's it. If someone mispositions, you take him out. That's it. You're not looking to force anything. If we can get bounties through indirect pressure, that's great, but we're not a Jax, we're Poppy. We're only one level down though. The Lilia should be pretty close. So we control our Raptors, we control our Krugs, that's great. We can reset here. We're gonna go into the Dead Man's because we're behind. So our atomization can shift as well. If you're a bit behind and you feel like you need that tankiness, do it. Just do it. The cow goes Moo. Ult, four people mid lane. Again, we have no vein. Cassiopeia is going to TP in. Um, mm, uh, let's see how it develops. On the face of it, we don't like it. On the face of it, we don't like it. <laughs> four mid with no vein. She has to walk on in. TP has to be committed by Cassiopeia. This was a bit ugly, yeah. I did not enjoy this. That, that, I know, I didn't like that at all. Man alive. But he's still 3 0 revive and he didn't die. And that's the most important thing. He did not die. Restraint on your part will always be good. They take this tower. Graves takes that tower. Silas is putting, split pushing bottom lane again. Do not worry, my friends. As long as you don't die. And I think that's... Maybe that's the lesson here. We're looking for, like, a story of this game to make it entertaining. Obviously, in this situation, we have the, the chem dragon second that no longer exists. But the map is not a chem tech dragon, so the, the game will still be relevant. Um... That's the, that's the thing here. Restraint. E again forces the flash. Cow goes Moo doesn't really get the full combo, but we'll get this done here. Now we actually use the ultimate for that small knockup. Just keep auto weighing. Be very care careful as Graves, but um, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> the passive Chuck. The ice hockey puck finally got the kill. Like, that was... Like... It's a tanky boy. <laughs> So, try not to die in stupid moments. Try to make picks when it makes sense. And if your team flounders and does something idiotic, let them be. This is good. You see, you keep him within touching distance with this gold. The plate gold and everything you're doing here keeps him within touching distance. <laughs> that, that was fun. <laughs> but now she dies. She went back in. That was, uh, you see how she hugged the wall? <clears throat> to avoid the stuns. That was very good. Man alive. We've got one turret. This is all bountified. Be the face checker here. So, if you ever play an organized play, Flex or Clash, and you happen to be a Poppy, obviously face versus let's just go in and out, but you're the one that has to go in first, you know, with the with, with Alistar. You're the one that has to face check and ward uh, because you can get in and out. You do have um, the kit that allows you to survive. Don't let your... Soraka support face check. Don't let your Malzar face check. You be the beefy person to do it. Uh, kite this out always. You see the Leona, you see everyone moving. Um, it's not worth dying for the rebuff. We don't have smite. She does try to go in. We do pick up the hockey, eh, hockey puck for a shield. Um, Leona re-engages onto the Malzahar. Very nice chain she should, should be activated on the Lilia. Again, well played. On the backline side, it's out of position. That's the trigger pull. That was great. That was really, really good. Don't greed for this and die. Oh, excuse me. My, my chest hit the microphone. Don't greed for this and die. Pull it back. Nice engage. And of course, again, well played by the red team being disciplined and patient. I guess this is more useful in Flax and Clash, but I think in solo queue as well. As long as you are disciplined and patient and you yourself play perfectly and don't die, you can come back in these games 100%. Um, bounty. Rukayu approved. You could, I was thinking, I mean, we could maybe try and force this. Because Graves is bottom lane, Lilia is still dead with no ultimate, or it will be up again. Um, Silas was also dead, it doesn't have TP. Jin is here. We can easily melt this, he's going to try and use his ult to poke. We do have deep vision, which is great. Um, and your poppy, so you tank that, so everyone else can di dish as much damage to the Baron as possible. Sneak that, very good. And that's always been the greatest thing, hold up. We need to try to get out here. Let the cow die, that's fine. Let the cow die, that's fine. And we kill the graves and we run away. Perfect, 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 perfect. Okay, so this has always been the greatest lesson when you're playing for these kind of games. It's just messy and you have to be patient. Let them tilt into you. They will get frustrated if you don't face check and die. They will get frustrated if you have everything warded and you're controlling as much as you can. Um, and when they do, that's when you that's when you pounce. All right, Poppy is so good at this too. Definitely want the... Um, uh, Force of nature. Next. 
Okay, replay glitch. Definitely want the Force of Nature next because obviously there's a lot of magic damage on that team from the uh, Lily as well as the Silas. Nine minutes to go. 20 to 18. We're only down 3k gold now. Excellent haul. And now you can easily scale and haul, but look at look at how she's walking into bushes and face checking. Look at this. You see this? She is the front line. She understands this. He's built accordingly. He knows that's what this is because we've got a mage top lane, a mage mid lane, and a vein. We do have the Alistair, but we need that added peel. All right? Excellent. Look at this. This is not what you see from good tanks. Look at this. The muzzle is just following. He understands this. This jungler understands his win condition. This is a guy that plays Diana, Viego, Nidalee, Lee Sin. He's used to being the win condition. Always being the win condition. Now, it's like, okay, I'm not the win condition, but I kind of am because if I don't do my job, we lose. It's so important as a jungler to understand this. And guy in chat who asked earlier, is jungle the best for learning uh, different champions to get better at the game? One of, yes, because you have to learn so many different classes and so many different metas. However, if you are a Divine Sunderer game, a little bit of split pushing here is fine. Can't push this, you see Grace top lane. Uh, he has Ignite, no TP, obviously. So you push this out and you cut through, you collapse down with your Baron push, you ward as you go. Standard stuff, Dragon spawning, so this is perfect. Free turret. Again, they're gonna re-push this up. Graves will probably look to do something else. Don't think he's gonna recall here. If he does, uh, then you gotta know that Graves is arriving, yeah? So, no Graves, okay? No Graves means be cautious. If you still see him, you can make a different play. Because he can't rotate, he doesn't have TP. He has to physically move. But the fact that he's based there means you gotta keep uh, your eyes open. Stay frosty, as it were. Dragon spawns, that's a great use of Baron just to decompress the map. Again, they're not looking to fight, they're looking to decompress the map from macro, deep ward, and pull back to the objective. Excellent discipline, but it's only working because Poppy knows what she's doing. All right, now obviously they know that's gonna happen, so they counter push. The mind games begin, or they've always been begin, always has been, always will, has, had, have been. In every timeline, in every tense, past, and future. That is an out of position Graves stealing stuff. They'll knock up there as well. Very good. Chem tank, E, Alt, dude ain't moving. Dude is not moving. And now we shadow. Come, cow, follow. That's what I would say. Cow, let's go. We go move. Come, ward. Cow, come. There we go. Let's go. Having a little support that follows you around is the best thing as a jungler. Mm hmm. Good ward. Okay. She control wards it. So we don't spend time clearing it in case the whole team collapses because we do have Malzahar in the mid lane. Uh, a bowling ball seed of. Not actually that much damage. Doesn't really do anything. Vayne will regen that. What is she building? Yeah. Makes sense. The Rylai's against the Cassiopeia and a Vayne is huge. And the, and the Phase Rush Poppy, to be honest with you. Because the W movement speed proc. Okay, be very cautious here. You want to pull this up or out? You do not want to die for it. Uh, we have two charges to smite, so we can do that. We can hit this and we can get out. Perfect. Well played. This is so good. This is like the ultimate. If you're behind, this is what you do. This is what you do, guys. Hydrate. I'll hydrate afterwards. <laughs> I can hear it too, don't worry. Yeet that from Vayne. She didn't see it, it's okay. If your ADC doesn't see it, it's fine. Jin is top lane. They're getting tilted. They're getting very, very tilted. Okay, this is, might have been a little bit too aggressive, but fortunately, Cassiopeia and Malzaha rotate, and we can use a phase rush to create some space. Um, that's uh, your Leona engage onto a poppy next to a wall. So... Not gonna work. Brilliant. Lucky, a little bit, but brilliant. That engage, for me, was a little bit too far from the team, but it did work. The team are now trusting the poppy. And that's something as well. This is a solo queue high elo game. No one's duo. Guys, no one is duo in this game, right? So the poppy has earned the trust of her team throughout this game, and when she goes for this engage, seeing the Jin top lane, they're, they're just they're like, okay, yeah, let's go. Let's, let's pull the trigger. Super good. I'm, I'm very impressed. This guy knows exactly what he's doing. Okay, bottom lane wave is pushing. We can now fall back to take our camps as we need. Baron is spawning very, very soon. So you want to maximize your experience here in gold cash monies. Uh, finish off that force of nature so we can actually be hyper useful against the magic damage team comp. Vayne's going to steal your raptors. Doesn't really matter. Again, now the cow is out of position. So what do you do here? Okay, you read and react. Cow dies. Don't die with him. Don't die with him. Cassiopeia's top lane needs to reset. Does have unleashed teleport. Can you 4v5? Can you steal the Baron? Can you 4v5? Dying for the Baron steal? Not good. People always ask, is it good to steal Baron here? No. I mean, <laughs> it's good to steal Baron. <laughs> it's not good to die for the Baron uh, because they can just end the game. Um, a, a certain team comes and they can also push. Wait for them to take it. Keep their focus. Wait for your team to show up. Split them off just like this. The Poppy Ult was obviously very well used. It's okay if they get the Baron because you, once your team joins you, 
with the with, with the TP from the Cassiopeia, you can do this. Give them the Baron, float with them on the edge, hit your ultimate, annoy them. When your team joins, say, well, that was a nice Baron. Pity. Would be a shame if, if we killed you all. Well, almost all. Right. Next dragon up. I mean, I'm 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 impressed with his discipline and his trigger pulls, but I'm impressed more so that the team is trusting him in every phase. And that's what perfection in terms of tank fighter gameplay is. Deep wards, okay. Obviously, these two have Baron, as I said. Um, this is pushing. Nice free dragon. See how easy it is. You see how easy it is. Now you're gonna say, "Well, it's not easy when my teammates don't listen." Well, I agree. I agree. But even in low elo. What do people respond to? You being fed, you making the right calls. And if you do that more often than not, you will win these games, 100%. That's why Moom is great. Because in these same games, if you engage perfectly and you read it perfectly and you just make those picks and those AOE ults, you'll win games from it, 100%, I guarantee you. That's why we recommend it. That's why it's recommended. That's what's getting nerfed. You guys see that, it's getting nerfed. I'll do a video on it next week um, to see if it's still good. Don't think it'll be that great. Take these on your way to the mid lane. We are now looking for one more fight. The whole the whole game has just been boring and patient for the blue team, and they just cannot seemingly make the right move because we've got a better team comp. 100% a better team comp. Move into their jungle. Look, just face checking, warding with a control ward as well. Has this now as well. We like to say as well in South Africa. As well. Mid lane pushing with the Baron, so you do have to keep be mindful. Silas is top lane again, no TP, double ignite, that's a risk where you run versus double unleashed teleport prestige edition. Um, Malzal's pushing the mid lane. So now there's gonna be a bit of pressure on the top turret. Um, Cassiopeia's TP is what? 64 seconds. Graves is not maybe faking, we don't know yet, we're just keeping an eye on it. Our, our red team basing, um, can I maybe take it in a tower? Are they going to engage? So for him, the safer move here is just to go back to base and bait the Malzahar to rotate. But Malzahar has unleashed TP. The Cassio, therefore, doesn't go back to base. The Cassio TP and the Malzahar didn't. The Cassio would go back to base. Whoever has TP, you go back to base. Look at this. This is like watching an organized squadron. Don't go back to base with your team if you don't need to. You could go back and buy a pot, an elixir, excuse me. Uh, probably a good idea as you're looking to do one more fight and win the game. But... You can also scout. I do think an elixir would have been a good buy. Back to base, buy an elixir. You, d you don't need any more itemization. Here we go. We got in deep from the vision control though. We got in deep from the vision control. So here we go. We're just watching. Lilia, you're out of position. Be very careful though. So, so is technically the, <laughs> the puppy. <laughs> Cow with the stun. Oh, okay. We hit the beautiful E onto the graves. We used our ult a little bit. And now we can kite back into the funnel, which is perfect because Cassiopeia is flanking from the bottom side. There's Malzahar again, spreading the Void Hobies like a big Corona of the universe. And now they're out of position. Numbers disadvantaged. Beautiful. Immediately. Use that deep positioning. Stun. Flash stun on that Graves. Make sure he dies. Numbers advantage in a funnel with your team comp. This, my friends, might not have been the spiciest game like the Jax one. But if you are finding yourself in the need of a comeback, in the need of team fighting, vision control, and map rotations, this is textbook. Absolutely textbook. And Poppy is one of the best to do it with. Hope you enjoyed and learned something. It wasn't the most invigorating, but you know what? I like macro and I like this kind of stuff. And this is the kind of small stuff. You won't hate these games when you're in them because you'll be so happy you won it. But it's a skill that if you want to climb perpetually and get to Master Plus, you need. So. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and learned something. Don't forget, bootcamp signups are linked in the description below, as well as a pinned comment that will happen end of February. Beautiful bootcamp. We will explain all of these things and more for different kinds of junglers. So if you want to know how to do this on an Evelyn, uh, on a Fiddlesticks, on a release, on a Rek'Sai even, we will give you that information. Um, main channel is interesting and has lots of stuff as well. That's about it. My name is Vakayu. Thank you very much for watching this channel. Of course it is. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial. And now I must hydrate. Oh.